I want to talk now to Harry Moultrie, who's a senior research epidemiologist at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Uh, Mr. Moultrie, good afternoon to you and uh, welcome. First of all, the contact tracing, which has just been announced. Uh, it's good news, obviously, and it's, we should be happy that it's happening. But in many respects, uh, the horse has already bolted. It almost beggars belief that parents would have allowed their children to go to something like this uh, at this time. Thanks, Jeremy, and I've been to your listeners. It was entirely foreseeable that an event like this, which involves large numbers of people in uh, small confined spaces, um, would result in a, in a super spreading event. It was entirely foreseeable. I think we all have to be more responsible, both the organizers, the, the students, the young people, the parents, in how we uh, uh, navigate our world going forward into the Christmas season. These kinds of events have incredible propensity to drive transmission within the wider community um, and result in, in overburdening of the healthcare ser services and unnecessary deaths. And probably even more so given that events like this, and I speak from a degree of experience having had two children who have attended, that uh, everybody who's there's guard is down. That's right. So, I, I, you know, people have had a tough year and people do need to find a way to um, enjoy themselves and find joy in their lives, but we've got to do it responsibly. And when you're in a, in, in a mass of 2,000 uh, other young people at multiple events and parties with alcohol, and it, it's not surprising that people drop their social distancing, their MPIs, their masks, um, and, and, and we've certainly seen a large number of cases. Uh, and this is very concerning uh, for the communities going forward. There's... I do think that these kinds of large gatherings should be discouraged and we should, um, parents and, and, and students alike should think about whether it's really a wise decision to attend. Well, I guess you would welcome the fact then that all rage events are now cancelled. But there's also the mythology of invincibility, I would suggest, that people believe that uh, younger people are less likely to uh, spread and, and to contract. That's right. So it's important to remember that so far we've had more than 4,000 hospital admissions in South Africa due to COVID in children under the age of 19 or young people under the age of 19. And we've had more than 100 deaths. Um, and, and they do develop, while, while perhaps they age is associated with increased severity, young people are not invincible and they do get uh, serious illness and they do get serious symptoms and they are able to transmit. Um, so th this idea that just because we're young and we're fine um, is inappropriate. It has consequences for the youth. It also has consequences for their family and their broader communities. Probably not in your direct area of expertise, but uh, the contact tracing is now underway. I'm wondering whether it would be more difficult with an event like this, which uh, it, it's difficult to keep a tab on, 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 on numbers and who attended. So the official attendees, you, one must remember that you know, there was the RAGE event, which is an officially organized event, which has fortunately got contact lists of everybody who paid uh, uh, to officially attend the event. Um, but there will be a large number of additional students who went down for the parties and stayed on the fringes and didn't attend the official events, which might be more difficult to contact trace. Um, so while efforts are underway, we're going to have to act really fast if we're going to have any chance of containing what really could uh, result in, in rapidly increasing transmissions um, within Gauteng and within Kwazu and Mattel. Uh, part of the difficulty is that these kids came from a large number of different areas, so, you know, not, you know, across Gauteng and across Kwazu and Mattel. And it's a large number of people to contact trace in a very short period of time. And that's the problem. We don't also possibly have the capacity to act with speed when it comes to that process. That's right. And speed really is of the essence here. Um, you know, three or four days of delay in, in identifying and contact tracing and testing, isolating, quarantining people can have significant um, implications for, for ongoing transmission. So we really don't have time. I, 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 I gather that the Department of Health, with the assistance of NICD and others, are working incredibly hard to try and contain this. Whether we will succeed, we have to wait and see. 
Just a final question, not related uh, to rage, but uh, we're now starting the downward uh, slide into the December holidays. We have all the holiday centers who are actively promoting safe tourism. Is the Institute starting to get a little jittery as uh, people move around the country, uh, possibly let their guard down again? Is there the potential uh, for uh, a greater spread of COVID-19 um, as people uh, leave to go on vacation? Absolutely. Um, the holiday season starting 16th of December is associated with massive increases in mobility. Uh, we see that in the cell phone data that uh, from previous years, and we anticipate it'll be much the same again. That mobility remixes everybody. It shakes all the balls up, all the people up, and puts them into different contact patterns and results in different uh, contact networks. And that, uh, together with... Um, if people don't maintain social distancing and MPIs and masks, can really result in substantial increase in transmission. We are already seeing some signals, though, um, in some areas of KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng, of, of sustained increases in cases. Those aren't directly related to the rage event, but, but it, it's possible that, that, that we might have increasing transmission even before the 16th of December in some of these areas. So we're watching it closely uh, together with the National Department of Health and um, trying to communicate the areas where we think are particularly at risk. From the National Institute for Communicable Diseases, a senior research epidemiologist Harry Moultrie, thank you very much indeed.